Greetings, everyone. It's Alicia. Many of you know who receive our various communications that we have been hinting to many projects since February of this year. Over the last few years, we have been having many public and private projects to exercise a thesis, whether it is about ESP, extra sensory perception, space, time, the intricacies of interspecies communication, which is commonly known as the hundredth monkey effect, and much more. Many of you have seen the importance of our work and have shown this through the multitude of consultations that take place, your continued patronage, whether it is financially or by sharing your expertise. So without further ado, we will be having a fascinating event that will commence on Friday, July 30th, 2021 to bring to you a series of atmospheric balloon launches that will be taking place across the United States. With your help, we will be doing a total of two to three launches. The first launch is already scheduled in Illinois for Friday, July 30th. The second launch will be in Georgia, and potentially a third launch will be in Arizona. Each subsequent launch will have a larger payload than the previous, capturing a multitude of data, which we will go over some of it in a moment. These will be free events so that all who see the importance can be part of these historic processes, because this is just another step in a long list of projects to come that will be public and private based on your shown interest. As the public release was being formulated, a longtime patron asked, if no one shows interest, would you all still do the launches? That answer is 100% yes. These launches are no different than the many experiments and projects we do all the time. It's just that this is the start of more public facing endeavors. So the community can enjoy, learn, dream, and hopefully co-create. So now let's get into more of the science of it all. The atmosphere is made up of many layers. The first layer that you can say we reside in, even though it is more so above us, is called the troposphere and ranges from 7 to 11 miles in thickness. This is the space that is utilized by hot air balloons and airplanes. The second layer that is above that is called the stratosphere and ranges from 11 to 31 miles in thickness. At least the lower stratosphere is where the first atmospheric balloon launch in Illinois will gather data. The next launches will go higher in this region. The third layer is the mesosphere and ranges from 24 to 55 miles in thickness and is utilized by meteorological rockets and where you would see a meteor pass. The fourth layer is the thermosphere and ranges from 49 to 497 miles in thickness. This is where the aura resides and displays the beautiful display of colors with the spectrum. The fifth layer that will be the last we will discuss within this particular video is the exosphere and ranges from 434 to 118,060 miles in thickness. The lower region of this layer is where you will find satellites and spaceships. Thus far, you have noticed two things. One being the range of thickness between each layer and two being the temperature changes as you ascend. Concerning temperature, yes indeed, it gets quite cold as you progress through the layers of our realm. Then it starts to get quite hot as you reach deeper into the thickness of the upper layers. Now to your most astute observation, which is of the thickest in layers, to simplify this, look at the atmosphere above us as an ocean. Not many differences than the oceans around us that have tides, currents, waves, swells, and surges. You will find this same phenomenon above us, and each layer is acting in unison as well as in its own distinct way. This is why for a launch into the higher atmospheric layers, you want to calculate to try to predict when the tides will be at its lowest so you can get as high as possible with the least resistance. On this first launch, we will be collecting numerous amounts of data, which not only will provide insight about the realm, but which will help with subsequent launches. Some of this data includes wind speed, direction, air pressure, 
temperature, location, audio and video, and much more. On the day of the launch, we will all meet at the launch location and finish preparations that have to be done on the spot, such as inflating the balloon, making sure the payload is secure, all devices and gear are operating properly, etc. On this first launch, we estimate from time of release to retrieval, once landed, to be about 1 hour and 45 minutes to 2 and a half hours long. During that time, we will track it, but for the most part, only thing you can do is wait. So for the many who are present, this will be the time where we can have a conversation about anything that is on your minds, which I'm sure will be fascinating. Once the payload is retrieved, we will have to analyze all the data gathered. But for those of you across the world, no worries. The event will be recorded and we will be putting up the footage. Georgia region launch will be late September and Arizona region launch will be mid-October. All right, thank you so much, Alicia. Uh, greetings to everyone, no matter where you are at in the realm. My name is Tony, and I would like to thank all of you for being present and for your earnest dedication along with us in raising all of our vibrations for well over 50 years. Who would have thought we would be here? A fascinating journey it has been, and guess what? There is so much more to go. Let us all see what can be manifested, what tangible experiences spring forth from these imagined thought forms. For this latest project, be aware that the weather has to be practically perfect for a successful launch. This is not just based on if it is raining, but it also can't be too windy because the jet stream could take the payload on a journey of 100 miles or more. If the weather does not subside, then the launch will be pushed to the following day and so on. We wanted to make sure this is known for those who may be coming from faraway places so that you can plan accordingly as this will be the caveat for all the future launches. Also, uh, launch sites cannot be near large bodies of water airports or restricted areas so because of this if you would like to attend you may have to acquire transportation as the site may be a ways away when these are planned for each launch some equipment like the atmospheric balloon has to be purchased in multiples just in case it may burst prematurely or any other unforeseen event what a shame it would be if we only purchase one and people travel from far and wide to attend and the balloon bursts. So you have to purchase multiple so there are no disappointments, but this adds to the many costs, of course. This is a pivotal moment for the community. Do you want to go deeper and see how far this goes? This choice is yours. As such, over the last few years, we have done many public and private projects, putting forth theories and verifying for ourselves what is true and not. And what I can say more than anything else is that you are more special than you may ever know. As such, you will find a donation link, which the goal is covering two, but ideally we are aiming for all three of the launches. Also, in the link, you will find Project Etheric merchandise, such as t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs, and other information. Again, at projectetheric.com. All updates, additional links, and any further information will be on projectetheric.com. Com. The imagination of some, I'm sure, is thinking of all types of possibilities and what in time would be discovered. All I can say now is that no matter where you reside within space and time, continue to put forth positive thought forms and pushing through becoming the best version of yourself because who knows, maybe one day we will rendezvous with Rama. <laughs>